Scientists in Japan have discovered a strain of bacteria that eats one of the most common kinds of plastic, otherwise known as PET. And this is found in bottled drinks, household items, cosmetics. It actually makes up one sixth of the plastic productions. So, um, so everything basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so Japanese researchers at the Kyoto Institute they collected 250 PET contaminated uh, samples from the recycling bunch, and they found that this. Uh, species called Ideonella sakinesis is breaking down PET wow. um, and it's definitely steps towards uh, more efficient recycling. I um, mean just to note there's 50 million tons of plastic produced each year wow. you know and and 14 percent is is only used for recycling so I mean it's just it's just really important that we start taking more efficient steps for this and this Ooh, hopefully is a doubt. small step. Much needed, you're, you're right, much needed because I mean you look at how much plastic we have uh, basically thrown into our oceans in such a short time, yeah. right? We, we really haven't been using plastic that long if you compare it to other materials. So this is so new and just in a few decades we've basically been able to litter so much of our ocean it, it, it's terrifying, right? To think that we went from nothing to so much plastic in our oceans so quickly it's, it's terrible and we really need to change first and foremost like this is a huge breakthrough like this is great this could potentially in the future be applied to so many great things mm -hmm. uh, as far as getting rid of plastic that's contaminating our environment but at the same time what really needs to happen though instead of like finding ways around fixing it and like making sure we can continue doing it we need to stop doing it and we need to like get off of our dependency on plastic specifically mm -hmm. no I completely agree with that um, and for this though even though we've also heard that mealworms can also live on a diet of, of, of styrofoam. You know, there's also, you know, that speculation too that it helps with eating up plastic. This is actually um, unique in the sense that it breaks it down into its most original form. So usually when you're recycling, um, it brings it down to like, you know, it melts away, but it's not usually its original Right, you couldn't form. use it like for you another plastic. You couldn't use it again, but this time, exactly. Mm -hmm. but, but this is a lot more um, just effective. Yeah, it makes it 100% recyclable. Yeah, also. exactly. And another thing that's also interesting too that this study notes is that um, because of the, you know, plastic in the past, the accumulation of plastic in the past 70 years, um, this is more capable of breaking it down at the right time in the right place just because there's been so much adaptation mm -hmm. of plastic balls that were not biodegradable and finally they are now with this enzyme. So I, I think it's pretty I think it is pretty cool. Noteworthy. Uh, that's for sure. And you know, although we are in the infancy of all this, like mm -hmm. we're just in the beginnings because it took a very long time to like eat away at that very little plastic that they used. So it's not necessarily efficient yet, but I think this shows that this type of technology or, or at least using bacteria to eat plastic is definitely applicable, applicable mm -hmm. uh, for the future. Like without a doubt, we can definitely see this happening uh, on a larger scale. Maybe I'm jumping too far forward now by saying like we could put this in our oceans and try to get rid of all the plastic. Maybe that's not a good idea to mm -hmm. put this kind of bacteria in the ocean period. Right, right. But I mean, I think it's a really cool prospect. Yeah, it is. Um, it does take a while. The scientists found it took six weeks for the enzyme to kind of break it down fully, but they're working on refinements. So do you guys think this is a step towards improvement? Let me know what you think.